Welcome to another DK Custom Products video. Today we're going to go over how to route the hoses on a oil filter, oil cooler relocation combination kit. In the instructions it says to inspect the hose every 5,000 miles or so, at least every 5,000 miles. And when I was inspecting it the other day, I noticed that the hose was looking a little bit old and that um, there were a few places where the hoses were rubbing against each other. They were okay, but then I saw a place where the hose had been rubbing against a bolt on the primary and it had worn through a little bit and I didn't like that. This oil filter relocation and oil cooler has been on the... Uh, was on my 14 tri-glide for about a year and a half and it's been on this tri-glide 19 for about two and a half years so the hose is four years old i didn't switch hose when i switched it from one bike to another because i wanted to see how long the hose would last so it's been in below freezing temperature it's been at 120 degree temperature has about 40,000 miles on it and it looks like it's about time to change it out. So we're gonna change it out today. You're gonna to see how I route my hose. It's not the only way to route it, but it's the way that I like to route it. And we're gonna get right at it in the shop here in a little while. So we'll see you there. And the first ones that we're gonna replace or take off of the old hose are these two and drain it in. And then we're gonna to move to this and undo these two and drain them. And then we're going to move to that, and then we're going to put all new hoses and clamps in. I bet you if we move this bucket further that way, and it I'm going to go open the dipstick. So we're going to let those drain and then we're going to move on to these right here and then finally to those up in there. Get a flathead screwdriver on there to break the seal. There you go. both of those out in the back. Yeah. Now they should just pull out from back here. Now just pull out. Okay. So, Nathan's helping me while we uh, change the hoses here. And what we're gonna do now is look at the hoses and see, show you where they were getting a little bit old and having a little bit of wear, which is why I wanted to go ahead and change them. That actually looks pretty good there. Let's look at that end. This end, do you see that little? It's oily now, but when it's dry, do you see it's 
like a little bit of dry rot right there. And then there were some, where were the wear marks? Maybe there were no wear marks on, oh, here we go. Oh yeah, that was the worst one right there. Where it was rubbing up against the bolt. And that's why you got to do inspections every now and then, at least every 5,000 miles. That was rubbing up against the bolt. And when we put it back on, not this one, when we put the new hose back on, we're gonna wrap some silicone tape around this because the bolt's not gonna change position. It's still gonna be there, but at least it'll protect it. But that took four years and about 40,000 miles for that to happen. There was also another spot right down here, not bad. Yeah, where it scraped a little right here and right here. Those wouldn't have failed anytime soon. Let's look at the short one, see what we got. That doesn't oh yeah, no, look at you see those little bit little bit of cracks right there? Just a little bit of cracks right there. Again, that wouldn't have failed anytime soon, but I don't see any big rub marks on this. Okay, and we got one more here. That's looking pretty good. One of these had a section where the hose was rubbing against the hose and it created a little bit of a flat spot. It. That's not bad at all, but that's just where hose was rubbing against hose. Cool, okay. Well, we're going to clean up this stuff a little bit and then get the new hose on. So here's the hose that comes with the oil filter relocation and dual pool oil cooler and the hose clamps. What doesn't normally come with it is the silicone tape. The reason I'm doing the silicone tape is I now know where the wear marks are on the hose and I'm going to put that there just to give it a little extra protection. It went four years like that so it's not really necessary but why not do it. So we're going to measure out how long these hoses need to be and put it back together. So we're going to lay out the hose we already have and cut the new hose to the same length. Not any shorter, not any longer, because it really was just at the right size. But if we make a mistake, make a mistake of cutting it longer, we can always trim a little bit off. Please like, subscribe, and comment on this video. It helps us out a lot. So what we did is we wrapped some silicone tape around the two spots that we saw were wear spots where stuff sticks out of the frame and just rubs a little. And so that's just a preventative thing so I could go another four or five years without having any issue. So we're going to put our hose clamps on here and start and put these three hoses back where they belong. There are several different ways to run the oil lines from back here to up front. The way that I like to run it is along the frame rail. And I want to run one hose on the outside of the frame rail, right through here, all the way up. And then I run the other on the inside of the frame rail. There's nothing sharp along the frame rail to mess up the hose. <coughs> The one spot that we had was on the one that was running inside the frame rail. And as it came out, it was pushed against the back side of this primary bolt. And that's what gave it the little 
uh, scrape mark there. But like I said, that took four years to get as bad as it did. And then the other thing is right up here, when it comes along the inside of the frame rail and then up through that hole, you have the motor mount hardware that has some, you know, things that aren't totally smooth and that's where you can get little rub marks there. So we're gonna run the hose starting at the back and we're gonna push it forward all the way up to here. We have it coming out of the engine at its hottest, coming back to the oil filter. So it's going through the oil filter at its hottest. It's getting filtered through the oil filter, cooling down because it's out in the wind. It has that hose. And then from the oil filter, it's going to go back to the oil cooler and go through the oil cooler and then from the oil cooler back into the engine. We're going to see that hose come out right along the frame rail there. There it is. Right up through that hole, right there, and there it is. So, this hose is running right along the inside of the frame rail. So our next step is to go from the out. We already have oil feeding out of the engine to the in port on the oil filter. Now we're going from the out port on the oil filter and we're gonna run along the outside of the frame rail all the way up to the oil cooler. And it just runs right alongside the frame rail. I'm going to come up right here, right there, and it's going to go right into the oil cooler right there. Okay, and we're going to clamp those down again, tight enough just so the hose barely pooches out on each side of the clamp, not so tight that it breaks the clamp and causes the clamp to fail. And the last step now is to run the short hose from the other side of the oil cooler into the back into the in port on the engine.
and there you go folks that's how to route your oil lines for your oil filter relocation and your dual cool oil cooler one inside the frame one outside the frame make sure you have the hose clamps tightened down not overly tight we're going to have another video showing the actual torque testing on hose clamps, how to tighten them down, how much to tighten them down, how much is too tight, how much they hold. That's going to be a whole other video. But that's how to install your oil lines, whether it's for the first time or whether you're replacing them after the three, four, five years old. Y'all right safe out there.